one-stop shopping there. So we got about a minute left. Closing words on this. What does this say about, I mean, activism or just the future of food, really? I mean, are we going to win or? <laughs> we are going to win. If there's one thing we're going to win, it's reclaiming the food supply and transforming our health because we can do that independently. No one's going to stop us from going to the grocery store and voting with our dollar. No one's going to stop this tangible evidence. No one's going to stop us from defunding McDonald's, Monsanto, McSanto, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And these alleged videos just further prove that they are on a downward spiral. And it's right. our time now to reclaim the food supply, transform our health, and ultimately decide what we want to do with our lives. Right. And there is transparency there, and I think that they're, they're realizing that. They can't, they can't hide behind their corporate doors anymore. I agree. But how can people actually beat these huge corporations? I think it's twofold. First, at an individual level, we can independently go out and vote with our dollar. We can defund Monsanto, defund McDonald's by purchasing super high quality organic food, which is the most effective way, and then we can defeat them, so on and so forth through that. But secondarily, in a larger scale, we have things like March Against Monsanto, the Food Justice March coming in October, sponsored by March Against Monsanto. All these things are drastically increasing consumer awareness. I mean, people like never before are now knowing what GMOs are. Even Gwyneth Paltrow speaking about GMOs, I mean, CNN covered that, right? So all these things, activism multiplied in small acts by millions of people can truly change the world. So at the grocery store, you're making a difference with your purchase and also spreading the word, sharing the word, supporting those that do. I think we're achieving a major victory. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Welcome back. Joining me in studio now is David Knight. You're just getting back from Virginia where you went to cover the story of uh, Bryce Williams, the gunman who shot dead a reporter, uh, her cameraman, as well as injuring another guest there. Now, I know obviously you were, you were going to uh, cover the press conferences and everything else, but what else were you hoping to discover there? Well, certainly, uh, Leanne, we were hoping there was going to be a press conference. Uh, it turns out that they had only had the one official press conference early the day before, uh, so the press conferences that were there, they didn't have any officials that were there. But we wanted to see the uh, media frenzy, see how they were using this, hoping that we could engage with some of the uh, people there with the government, because, of course, they're using this to push gun control. It's an international story, I was really surprised at how much traction and coverage it got internationally. And the lady who is a survivor is absolutely amazed as well. And she was there at the center of it. And of course, there's a lot of people who are very concerned about whether or not this is genuine. And I have to say that as of this point, I don't see anything there that would indicate to me that the shooting itself was a hoax. What is happening now in the aftermath of it is most definitely a hoax, the way they're trying to use this and spin it. But typically what we see in a situation like Sandy Hook, 
there's no survivors. Everybody is pronounced dead immediately. Well, this one lady survived. Uh, she is now out of the hospital, and like a lot of people are saying, they're concerned that they th they're looking at the footage and they say, well, I don't see her getting hit. Uh, I don't think that she would be able, you know, it, it just doesn't look real to them. You have to understand that the other lady who survived, she was standing there and he took two shots at her point blank and completely missed her. Right. And then she got down on the ground in a, in a ball as if that was going to protect her. At that point, he was able to hit her because she wasn't moving. And so she's and, and she was actually able to walk to the ambulance when the ambulance got there. So we were kept from getting to the crime scene. We'll show you some footage of the crime scene. And, and Joe Biggs has a report on that. Uh, by the time we got there, of course, they had all the journalists blocked off from the crime scene while they were cleaning it up, while they were replacing boards. We were able to then go and look around and, and see what had been replaced. But of course, we can't see any uh, blood stains at that point because they, they've got that removed. Nevertheless, we have to understand that people don't immediately die when they're shot. I took a concealed carry course decades ago, and I, it was taught by a retired Secret Service agent. And what he said at the time was, you have to understand that the people just don't fall down like they do on television. Right. He said, you can hit somebody center mass and they won't go down. He gave me an example of a, uh, a situation where there was three or four, because it's been decades, I can't remember, three or four FBI agents who were arresting a guy who was a martial arts expert. They shot him multiple times when he attacked them. He bled out in 40 seconds because they, they hit a major artery near his heart. But before he bled out, he killed all the agents in the room. And that was the warning wow. that he gave to us, that yeah. people are not going to go down necessarily when you shoot them. It depends where you shoot them, how you shoot them. Now, the other thing that we found when we went there, Leanne, was, of course, it's not just the Second Amendment under attack by the governor of Virginia, who happened, and Hillary Clinton. He happens to be her former campaign manager. He was assistant campaign manager for Bill Clinton, and he was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager in 2008. And quite frankly, that's the only experience this guy's got is as a campaign manager. And of course, they're always campaigning. Uh, it's always a campaign, and this is a campaign for gun control. That's what he's com campaigning right. for. But one of the things that we found that was very disturbing was the fact that it was also the First Amendment that had been attacked that day. A BBC crew was the first on the scene at the, at the site where the alleged shooter allegedly committed suicide, and the Virginia State Police threatened to confiscate their car, to confiscate their camera if they did not delete the footage. And the amazing thing was, the policeman identified as Officer Clark said that uh, this could be evidence. And so they questioned, well, if it could be evidence, why would you, why would you make us delete that? Exactly. Yeah. Now, as the BBC was very upset about this, I didn't hear anything about it from any of the other journalists that were there, but they did contact the Virginia State Police and they said they're aware of the incident, that it violates uh, Virginia State Police policy. Of course, it violates the Constitution. And we have seen this over and over again. This is not an isolated incident. We've seen many cases where officers demand that people uh, not take a picture of them, demand that they delete footage. And when I heard about this, this, this got me very concerned because it's very much like what we've seen happening in Spain when uh, Alex Jones was just there with Rob Dew and they forced them to delete their, their footage. Fines of uh, anywhere from 600 to uh, 30,000 euros. Right. That's a lot of money if you just take pictures of the police or you're critical of the royal family or critical of the government. That's what we have to be concerned about as well. And it's just so surprising that they would want to confiscate footage after the fact, saying that it could be evidence. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and then so what do you think about also the media, the way that they're covering this as well is that a lot of places aren't covering the racial aspect of this attack because yes. he clearly said in his manifesto that he wanted a race war. And it was he bought his gun the day after uh, the Charleston shootings there. Um, you know, Dylan mm -hmm. Roof, he said, if this is what you want, then here, go for it. Although I haven't he been had able been, you know, he had this ideology before then. True. And I haven't been able to find any links to SSRI uh, drugs or any kind of psychiatric treatment, which has typically been the hallmark of all these shooter right. cases. Uh, but what he did do, and I've said this before, he, he is definitely drinking the Obama Kool-Aid, mm -hmm. the divide and conquer, hyper political correct racism that is out right. there. And it is turning uh, very violent. We had another incident today that was uh, on Infowars.com, a video of a couple of black people uh, beating a white person. Again, this is the consequence of this divide and conquer. And just like the Jonestown suicide cult, what 
the Democrats are doing for political gain with this narrative that they use, starting with the Charleston shooting especially, this is where this is going to lead. It's going to lead in mindless, violent attacks on people just because of their race. Right. It, it, it increases the racism. We've had the most divisive president in my lifetime with Obama, and it's amazing to me that with all the time they spent on the Confederacy and Jefferson Davis with the Charleston shooting, that nobody is talking about the real connection, the real motivation of Obama, how he motivated this kind of right. hatred, this kind of racism. Right. And that's why the, the story I had is like Obama's first domestic drone strike, because this guy was acting like a droid, a drone, a right. robot. Well, and that's why we have this people. obsession with political correctness. We have so many people now. I mean, colleges are becoming these institutions for yes. this uh, yes. authoritarianism and, and changing the way we speak and the way we address people with the proper pronouns. And some of the things that he was upset about were not even racist. They were terms of the of the industry where he would, was upset when he was told to go out in the field and shoot. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You go out in the field as a reporter or a cameraman. But he was, you know, he would say, what, is, what do you mean, cotton field? That's racist. <laughs> and so that's sort of the thing yeah. is like everything is can be seen as racist when you are uh, when you're victimized. Racist. When or, you're racist, you yes. see everything and that you, you tend to project on other people the way that you see things and the way that you interact with people. So right. if you see everybody else out there as not as individuals, but simply as a member of a group, a faceless group, then you assume that they're just looking at you as a member of a group and not as an individual. If we don't stop this, this is going to be fatal. When you look at the Black Lives Matter, of course, Soros and the leadership of the Black Lives Matter want to have this kind of divide and conquer strategy. Right. And I've said before, if black people want to stop this from happening to them, and it is happening to them at a higher rate than it is happening to white people. If they want to stop the police brutality, they need to make common cause with everyone. Because if they separate themselves out, if they get hostile to the rest of the people, then the rest of the people, the larger community, is going to say, well, it was justified. Right. It's not justified. But that's where this is, is leading, this divide and conquer strategy. Yeah, and that's it. No one is going to win when you have the divide and conquer. Well, thank you, David, and we'll be looking forward to more reports. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning into the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv, where your subscription will get you instant access to 18 years worth of content. And we certainly appreciate your support here at InfoWars. You help make this possible. We'll see you here again Monday, 7 p.m. Central. You know, with all this talk lately about gun control, it occurred to me that I've yet to see a single politician who can explain to me how they plan to take guns away from the criminal thugs who are out there on the streets right now. Oh, sure, you'll hear plenty of talk about how they plan to take guns away from us, us law-abiding citizens. But if you take guns away from all of us legal gun owners, then the only people that will have guns will be the bad guys. In fact, I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. All those for gun control, raise your hand. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Any questions? Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. And that's the principle of InfoWars Life, as far as I understand, that you've always had, is that it's not about synthetic chemicals and forcing actions. It's about letting your body do its own thing and giving your body the tools it needs to create these different compounds that are super valuable and super beneficial. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139.
You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.